of one. CRMV. Again, K, Charm's plan. All right, here we go. I'm dumping out of the oh, yeah, a little big shocker here. Sell. Sell half. Thank you. Let it all go, baby. Oh man, M A R A. Ah. Sold it all. What's going on, everybody? Stock Jock here. Up $60,058 today. It was by far my best day ever. My previous best day was $56,000. This one took the cake. Uh, not all of it was day trading. Um, most of it was a swing trade that I had on Boeing. Uh, that we can look at real quick, um, but and then we'll get into day trades. Boeing, um, it was kind of kind of rumored slash everybody kind of knew that their 737 Max would get uh, the ungrounding order today, which is pretty huge for the company. So um, first, Boeing had this pop because of the vaccine. Pfizer's vaccine came out, got a pop up, and I I bought some some of these. I only have bought. Uh, 20 calls at the time about the 220 day call um sorry about 20 december 200 strike calls on this pullback here uh, the reason was is it was the fibonacci retracement uh it was a it was the 38 level fib it was also around the 200 day moving average at the time that's that purple line here on the daily chart and it was a starter position. I was actually thinking, okay, well, if it got into this gap, I'd actually add more. Uh, so it, it was a starter position at the time. Um, and it just turned out to be the, the perfect entry. Um, then, then we had kind of confirmation, kind of rumor that today would be the ungrounding order. And, and it just kind of ran in today, gapped up. Pre-market today, uh, oh, it was up at... 26 but it, it ended up opening up and just kind of selling off sell the news event pretty pretty clear so as it looked like there was going to be no no second run here uh, i just ended up exiting the entire position i sold 10 contracts right at the um right at the open just to lock in some profit and it was about it was about a 20 i want to say twenty five thousand dollar win on 10 contracts you'll see i can't remember uh, you'll see it when i run it live and then when it just looked like 
there wasn't really going to be much love here for Boeing. It was just a sell. I just started selling everything. Um, I actually did have some weekly 220 calls as well that I picked up yesterday in anticipation of, again, this pump. So I sold all 25 of those. Big profit there. And, um, yeah, huge, huge win. This is like a five, 500% win on these contracts here. Uh, pretty big. And then this one, I think, was a 200% winner. It was it was remarkable. So I was up around, I think it's $47,000 right off the bat. Also, Mara, these calls I've had forever. There's a Bitcoin sympathy. It just has not done well for me. And today was like one of my few days that I've been green on it slash uh, break even. And I took that opportunity just to get it off the table because I'm starting to run out of time on it. They're, they're a month away from expiring. And yeah, you know, I don't want to get faded any more than I already had. So with the recent two days of popping on Mara, I took that opportunity to get off the table and maybe get a better price down the road as Bitcoin is now in pullback mode like it tends to do, gets these huge pops, consolidates for a couple more days, and then gets another pop, rinse and repeat. So I just got it off the table, I think break even. You'll see me exit that. So that'll be the first thing you see. Another thing I wanna say is, uh, the, the clips all that you're seeing right now is from my live stream on Twitch. If you wanna watch me trade in the morning live with about 200 plus other people watching, come on over to Twitch. The link is in the description of this video. Uh, it's completely free um, and it's a great learning experience for those that are trying to learn for those that are trying to make money it's a great community there's a lot of great traders there and we're always bouncing ideas off each other learning other people of hey check this out you know um, there's some trades today that uh, I took later on in the day that I made money on it if I didn't have other people in the chat room alerting me of it I wouldn't have made money and vice versa so that's what we try to do, just create a, a really good community for people to come, trade, share their experience, and hopefully for the ones that are learning, hopefully get you guys to change your financial family tree. So anyway, that the Boeing trade and Mara, those are just closing swing trades that I've had for, well, the Mara one I've had for like th two, three months, something, I don't even know, it's insane. And I've had to average down quite a bit because it just hasn't acted right. Um, and the Boeing trade, like I said, um, before this one, I had a pretty pretty long uh, hold on some Boeing contracts that, on that COVID news, the, the vaccine news that I was able to sell into. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That'll be the first block. The second one is this, this is the trade that I'll actually, uh, this is the first day trade. This is on Tesla here. So let's look at some Tesla, some Tesla. So this is at 9.40 a.m. So that went on right here. So Tesla out of gates, kind of sold off. Got a lot of, lot of wicks down here showing some, some buying going on. Shoot straight up, pull back, pull. This is, this is like, I have a strategy that and it's not, it's not original. I mean, at the time I thought it was original when I was like, oh, this is, this is how stocks move. They pop up, they pull back, and then they go candle over candle and they move up again, like stair steps almost. But apparently, I mean, this is years ago, come to find out there's things called the three bar play, two bar play, whatever. Uh, this is, I, I, I coined the term pop, pull back, candle over candle. This is the strategy that when I first started learning in understanding trading, this is the one. This is the one uh, pattern that I got good at, understood, and I still use, use it today. It's my my favorite one. And typically, you get a in a stock that's moving had a big pop, um, maybe break of VWAP, break of some consolidating pattern, high day break, something, something significant, uh, and also typically when the stock is moving up on the daily chart. So here was the pop in the morning. We broke high a day, uh, pop, pop, pull back candle, pull back candle, pull, pull, pull back candle. And I was just waiting for the first candle over candle. I took um, the 450 calls on this. Uh, I wanted to take 20 contracts. 
I didn't take stock because I don't have enough. You know, normally I would take 2,000 shares of maybe a stock. I just don't have uh, the margin to do that. <laughs> I'd have to have over a million dollars of margin to do that. And I don't. I got close, but I don't. Um, so to, the only way to play this with size for me is contracts with options. So I took that and I play it the same way. I'm not playing like I think this is going over 450 quite a bit or whatever. All I'm doing by buying these contracts is just playing an increase of the premium price of the strike price of the premium that you have to pay for the contract. That's all I'm doing. So I bought right there when we got the candle over candle. So here's the pop. Here's the pullback right here is the candle over candle. And that's where I bought target is the high of the run, which would be there and selling over that. And that's what I did. I bought um, right here. I bought 20 contracts at 918. And I sold them. I don't really like looking at contract charts, but they are what they are. Hello. Uh, let's just look at the freaking stock. It makes more sense. All right. I bought here. Sold a minute later, 10 contracts for plus $600. Sold uh, 20 seconds later after that. The other 10 for about $420. So about a $1,000 gain right there. Um, ish, whatever. So a nice trade overall. And, you know, this is, again, my bread and butter. Pop, pull back, candle over candle. So I'll show that live. I uh, ap apologize that it is quiet during the video when I'm trading because that's the way it is. I It's just quiet. So it is what it is. And, you know, if you want some music, put it on yourself. But uh, th it'll show me trading. And, you know, if it's quiet, it's just because it is quiet. Oh, come on, not another day where you couldn't break high day on this first little go. Wow, really? There you go. That's better. That's better. There you go. There you go. How you doing? So half. So the rest. That was a nice little one minute play there. So pop, pull back, candle over candle entry right here. And now it rips. Uh, and the bonus is that it was holding the 90 MA. So this next trade was on Nikolai and I have a new source that I listen to every day. It's in my ears and I constantly am alerted to breaking news or news that's relevant to a certain stock that could potentially move a stock. Uh, the squawk or the you know, basically all it is is someone reading headlines in my ears. And in this case, it was, uh, well, first off, the service called Benzinga. If you're interested in it, they do a free trial. The link is down below. If you end up signing up, you support the channel. So um, this huge pop here was based off of some news. It was kind of vague of what it was, but it had something to do with Nikolai and GM and potentially GM's batteries being in Nikolai Badger's truck that's coming out, yada, yada, yada. 
Uh, the main thing is, is for a while now, there's been some talk that maybe GM's going to leave the Nicola. Nick, I keep saying the name wrong. Nicola uh, deal, whatever. Um, so the fact that the, it was on the, the website being promoted was a positive thing for this company. And as you can kind of see, it, it kind of took off here before this kind of huge dump. But uh, when I heard it, I got over here, started buying some $25 calls because I'm saying, I was thinking, if this is true, if this is really the real deal, uh, this could absolutely explode because there's so many shorts in this thing. So I just got over here, started buying the $25 calls. Just, I bought them 10 times. So I, I had 100 of them, right? Uh, and this is at 9.42. So I was a little late to the party. You can kind of see the news was here, and I was buying it inside this candle. So a little late to the party. Still got a decent pop out of it. Um, I was buying them from anywhere from $0.49 uh, cents to uh, basically $0.80, cents, right? So uh, the last lot was 80. So anyway, got a good good fill. It did end up popping up pretty good up to 2436. And when I when I do news plays or any kind of move where I'm in a stock, it gets a decent pop and I have size, I always like to sell like half and just lock in profit. And so that's what I did at first. You can kind of see I was buying at like 942 and like 30 or 20 seconds later, 30 seconds later, I sold half. So sold half for 80, and that would have probably been, you know, an average of 45, sold at 80, you know, 35 cents on 50 contracts. Nice win, right? Uh, and then I get to play around with the second half, and this is kind of what I was looking at, at the time. I was again looking for the pop, the pullback, and the candle, the first, candle over candle after the pullback happens so this is a pop this is a pop makes a new high of the run new high of the run pullback because we don't make a new high of the run so we're in the pullback phase this is another pullback candle and this candle finally breaks the, 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 the last pullback candle right here so that's my pop pullback candle over candle so when we went candle over candle the thing i'm looking for immediately is first off that's my entry if i wasn't already in it in this case i was already in it uh, but what I was looking for is continuation. I want to see it get up to the high of the run immediately, just like the last Tesla trade did. Uh, it does not do that. And then when that, this is what I kind of call a false break. So my stop loss on a false break is candle under candle, right? It just went candle over candle, didn't do anything. If it looks like it's going to go candle under candle, I'm out. And that's what happened here. It kind of looked like it was going to go candle under candle. And I stopped out the rest at 86. Nice win on the rest. But what ended up happening is it just kind of set up a W pattern. And, I'm, you know, I didn't play the W pattern. Uh, w pattern is you get your pullback. You get your candle over candle fail. Another pullback down to some, some uh, in this case, it was the VIP app. But, but typically, it's the 9 EMA. And then... Uh, then it goes. So you got your pop, pullback. <sighs> you got your, your pop, you got your pullback, your second pop that fails, another pullback. And then it goes. And that's kind of, oh, and, oh, oh geez. <clears throat> and that's kind of what happened there. But so it kind of stopped me out and then it went. But you know what? I made a nice, nice chunk of change on it. Brought me over 50K on the day at this time. And, you know, it is what it is. It could have been a huge win, uh, but I try not to think about that. <laughs> yeah, so here's the trade. Supposedly, there's Nikola battery technology on the GM website right now.
there. So GM is supplying the battery for the Badger. That's not, the, not Nikolai supplying anything for GM. At least they're working together though, so maybe this gets some legs. GM website. Let's look it up. General Motors. I don't see it yet. Fifty six K is my big my bet my best day ever. Fifty six. See if this nickel I get some legs here. Got a one minute play. Let's see if we can find that link before it goes candle over candle. No, don't see it. Twenty four, twenty four, twenty four. Here it goes right now. Missed it. Really can't go? You've been pooped on for so long, Nikolai. So! Alright. Alright, so this next trade was on Nikolai again. Uh, this time we had the you know the the pop the pullback the candle over candle pop 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 pullback candle over candle fail right just like this one well I was like well it failed before and gave us like a W pattern right gave us the W pattern before maybe it'll do it again so my thought was you know we got the fail because it didn't make uh it didn't make a new high of the run you know if this is a run so i was thinking maybe it'll just do one of these again or at least i'll watch it and typically when the w pat if i'm playing a w pattern or some people call it an abcd pattern um because it's a b c d but it's also w um the breakout spot is this part of the w right there so that's when this thing took off so i was watching this area right here thinking okay we just had the fail are we going to move down to a moving average in this case it went a little further and then come right back up and break this guy right here this the middle part of the w and then go and sure enough that is exactly what happened um Typically, I, I like to see the W pattern hold the 90 MA. It did re it broke it, but then it did regain it. So I was willing to try it. So it was the break of this area right here, what I was looking for. Um, and you know, there's two resistances. Uh, if that you know first resistance is this peak, you know, and if that breaks, it probably gets a decent pop, and which would lead us through this resistance area, which is high a day at this time. So, uh, I got exactly what I was looking for. 
I went long inside this candle here as we were approaching this peak. Looking for it to break. I took 4,000 shares, average 24.89. Uh, got the break, got the break of this, sold half. Again, selling half to lock in profit, and that allows me to play around with the second half, maybe go for that bigger win. But uh, absolute stop loss at this point would be break even. I'm not gonna go red on a trade that I'm currently green on. So um, I sell half right as it looked like it was coming in this area. You'll see when I run the clip, there's a big seller at $25, but it didn't look like it was, you know, buyers were being scared of it. So I was like, okay, we probably break this. And sure enough, we did break it, got a nice little pop, and I sold on the other side of 25 uh, at 2508 for, for another nice win uh, early on in the day here. Four, nice six, there we go. Big seller there. 25, probably goes though. Building up some steam here. 25 getting hit. 25 getting hit. See ya 25. So this is the part of the day where things start to go really bad. And this trade is very long in time. So feel free to fast forward around on this trade. I, I put most of it up. The, the second half sell, and you'll see, I, it just went on for another like seven minutes. So I actually cut that part down. But uh, while well, I was watching Boeing and looking for maybe a, a, a reverse head and shoulders on this thing with maybe this kind of a, a neckline. So you have uh, your left shoulder, your head, or, not reverse inverse head and shoulders your left shoulder this is a one minute chart so you know one minute patterns don't really they're not the cleanest they're not really even patterns half the time than that were i mean they're not reliable so in this case i was i'm looking for a reversal boeing has big news today i was thinking maybe it's gonna get a late rally after an early sell-off I, I was just looking for any excuse to play it and i got my excuse so left shoulder head right shoulder neckline uh, especially with a, a bunch of tries here that kind of gave me this descending resistance line. And the second thing also I was looking for is we bounced off the 90 EMA here, bounced off it again, and I was thinking maybe you get a five minute, bounce off the 90 EMA on the five minute chart and get five minute pop, pull back candle over candle, and then you get the break through the VWAP, and then that would you know completely get Boeing going on another run. So when we broke through this neckline or descending resistance line, I went long uh, 20 contracts at 225, just thinking if this doesn't work out, you know, I'm going to take the 225 strike, I'm not going to get beat up as much. And the th thought process was at the time, and it's hard to see here, but there was a little you know pop, pullback, candle over candle fail here. This is actually beat. This, you know, went candle over candle by like three pennies. So that's a fail. So that's like a, a, a peak. It's like a resistance point. So I was like, okay, well, if I break this descending resistance line, I'm going to take 20 contracts, which I did. And if we break this guy, that's a that's kind of a big thing. I'm going to take another 20. So I did. I loaded up around first lot was at $2.79. Second lot was at two eighty eight. dollars So I'm in it. And then it just failed. It just did not go. And I ended up cutting the first lot uh, loose at 238. So I lost about 40 cents or $800 on that first trade. The second trade, uh, I let roll a little bit. First off, I thought I was completely out when I first sold, but I still had more contracts. And I was watching uh, two things. And you'll see me, I'm constantly like evaluating, constantly see like what's the pattern here. Basically what happens is, you know, you have this very short term stuff, but uh, it did break this support line. It's, and after that, I kind of just rolled over. And, and when that happened and went, went, my last kind of thing was, okay, if it breaks this nine EMA here on the five minute chart, that would be my stop loss. And when that happened, you know, it hurt, uh, but I had to sell. And it was like um, almost a almost a $2,000, that's about $1,800 loss just on the second lot. So overall, 
There's almost a $3,000 loser there. And this is the start of uh, some really unfortunate back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back red trades, I believe. I think I go into, uh, I did well in GP. We'll go over GP next, but, um, you know, I went from being up over $50,000 to under that pretty quickly. Uh, but that was this trade. It doesn't always work out for me, and this is one of those that went against me. Watching this Boeing, this, this is maybe a reversal here. I'll add if it gets over this 218.20, come on, 218.30. He's wearing a deer costume. Are you talking about Ross? Come on. No, he's not. He doesn't have his deer ears on today. Keep saying nice things about BA. I want to break 1K on the rest of my calls. <laughs> See so yeah, this this one we own right? We we own Bitcoin or Boeing now. This one is our baby. BLNK is giving you a little bit of FOMO, but you know it's not really the type of stock for that price. Come on. Five minute looks good for a move. Just tap the VWAP. I need to get over 34. So that level right there. Come on. There's a Pecola, uh, 2620 the high now. Descending pendant. I mean, yeah, you could totally draw it like that. But Pecola that's my point. Saying is it is new. it is breaking this this diagonal right now. That's why I'm interested in it. And it has a nice little five minute candle over candle that might give it a, a little oomph too. It could fail. This looks like a false break right now, but come on. Um, we'll see. It goes right back to 40. All right, it's not the top. If it breaks 55, then we're looking at 60, 70. So, I mean, it's not great. Come on. Watch 61 for a move up to 65. So I might get back a little bit on this one. We'll see. One minute doesn't look good anymore. Five minute just flipped. So I come back down to this 216.40. Yeah, not ready yet. Almost, but it wasn't. It's not ready yet. This peak right here, that's what I'm watching. Come on. Would you play Macy's? I won't play anybody's earnings. Chad, I got distracted with phone call. Where did 50k? But yeah, Boeing calls. You you missed it, huh, Razzler? You also missed like 300 gifted subs. It was like a gifting sub party here. Even you, Goop, is happy today. Solo's still going. FUV's doing well. All these U.S. Uh, EVs are doing well today. I don't like as much. 
Oh, you can still hear Ross. Yeah, that's Ross, by the way. of this. <sighs> Tesla's doing well. Come on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well for Wombat, somehow managed to dodge 300 subs. Come on. Mm -hmm. Do you guys think Peltier keeps going over the next month, still holding some 69 calls? But it doesn't look like it's slowing down, man. And congrats on your calls. Ninety MA is some of level of interest here. Volume still declining here, so consolidation is still going on. But I'm probably come on flush some. I think that goes. I wonder if Jim is planning on announcing tomorrow. I need no, and NKLA didn't announce that. That was GM. They put that on their website. It was on GM's website. Gentech, there it is, the 2000 bits. Oh my gosh, so we just finished Pizza Wranglers. Alert. And we got 100 more to go, 150 more to go. <laughs> Sagig, how did I miss this one? Gifting the gifting it out to the community. Thank you so much, man. <laughs> yep, I'm out. There goes the fifty k. So this next trade, it was one that looks really nice technically, but. The volume it was so low in this that it was hard to actually get out of. So GP is one recent IPO. It's been popping up recently. Um, the whole space has been kind of doing well. So this big not a not a surprise at all that it's been doing well. And the big thing on watch today was a break of this horizontal here on the daily chart. But when I flipped over to it, I immediately saw this move to high day, followed by consolidation. Now, you know, if you just want to look at it very simply, it's just pop, 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 high day, pull back candle, 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 pull back candle and then we got candle over candle right there. And that's where I entered. Uh, I entered right there. I took 2,000 shares. I got filled at 18 right there. And I was looking like I always do. When we go candle over candle is a high, a break of the high of the run, which we got by a penny, but it looked like it was just gonna blast off and, and go to like 1020 and maybe the top of the Bollinger Band here. What ended up happening is it got up to 1810 with decent volume and sold off real hard. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So then I had to. Wait and see. My stop loss was going to be like a break of this 90MA, probably like 1783 level. 
wait and see. And sure enough, it did climb back up there on the next candle and then it finally broke it. But just watching how thin this was, there just was not a lot of volume. I mean, look at this candlestick. This thing's only 2,000 shares of volume, right? So I what after being up and then down instantly, like in a blink of an eye, uh, I was like, I, I just need to get out of this when I can. So um, I sold 1,000 shares at 1809-ish for like 90 bucks. And then I put my order on the ask. You'll see that at 1817. And I got I got filled on that one. So decent win. But this is why you got to trade stocks that actually have volume because it's actually hard to get out of this one. One minute is 1797. Come on. Let me make candle. The candle's already fired. Okay. All right. 1810. Come on. Come on. Break 1810. Come on. How is this possibly coming down? 20,000 shares of volume at 1810. I couldn't break it. Aww. Come on. So that's looking like a false break. Unless you can bounce back up there. Come on. Guys talking football. <laughs> Come on. There it goes. Come on. It's a tricky little trader, isn't it? Sold half there. There we go. Come on. See if I get taken out. This is me right here. Yep, got taken out. All right. So these final two trades happened kind of back to back, and it was kind of unfortunate the way it went down. Uh, uh, the, the, the first trade that I really liked a lot was this Tesla one. Uh, tight consolidation, looked like the price was about to kind of take off of an area. The big one was a descending resistance line. It just looked really good. And at first, I know it looks like it dumped here, but at first, it broke to the top side. And when it did that, I bought 40 contracts of the 455 calls right at the money. I felt confident. It just looked really, really good here, especially with Tesla threatening candle over candle on the daily and also breaking a pretty big horizontal level here on the daily chart that could give us a move up to 480, which I actually, actually played later on and made a ton of money on it. Um, and it was actually the part of my day that 
propelled me like this this is end up being a loser here but it propelled me from like forty five thousand dollars to sixty and i made fifty fifteen thousand dollars on that trade but this one it looked good so i went long but as soon as i went long benzinga which you can't hear in the video but it's in my ears alerted me to uh rumor or uh, i can't remember if it was rumor or confirm but datadog uh, had a deal with microsoft so I get over here immediately, see where it's at. I buy 2,000 or 4,000 shares at basically 86.36, so a really good entry right in here. Uh, you get the idea. 86.36 shoots up to 87, um, and I sell at 87 and 87.04. So really nice win on that spike. So when I sell, if I'm thinking, oh man, I just crushed this one, 70 cents on 4,000 shares, heck yeah, 2,800 bucks, whatever. And then I look at my Tesla that I just bought and uh, that I thought was breaking out at the time. Well, it, ten it ended up not breaking out. It, it did a false break. So this descending resistance line, like I said, broke to the top side and immediately failed uh, and broke down to the downside. And when I did that, I came back over here. I was just like, all right, screw it. I'm out. Cut the loss. So I entered that Tesla one around $8.81, and I ended up selling at $7 and an average of like 20 cents. So that was, that was a really big loss. I guess four or $5,000 loss on that alone. So... <sighs> It is what it is. Uh, you win some, you will lose some. Again, later on, I did play that Tesla and knock it out of the freaking park. Um, it did take me a little bit, though. I I had a couple losers on it. This was a loser, followed by this was a, a bigger loser. At one point, I was down to 40000 on the day. And then finally, I got the move I was looking for on Tesla. I bought 40 contracts. Oh, this was another loser. Where is it at? I know I hit it out of the park. <laughs> uh, there's there's some, right? So bought Tesla at four or five ninety, sold half at seven fifteen, and the other I bought uh, shares there, and then sold the other lot at uh, seven. Uh, this one uh, bigger win, and so it later on it did pay off to actually play Tesla to the long side and I I was I was in it for most of this run and I actually ended up selling the contracts that I had um, when I got my all-time best so it was a great day overall like I said I'm up sixty thousand uh, dollars at the end of the day cut my day early um, it was kind of funny I was up like fifty nine thousand seven hundred dollars like oh screw this I'm gonna get I'm gonna get sixty and that's what this FEV and this this dish trade was uh, trying to get that last little bit to get me over 60. Um, so it was a good day overall. Again, all live on Twitch. All of this is it's a really good community. We gave out a ton of gifted subs today. At one point, um, there was over there was over 260 gifted subs given out. It was amazing. So it was a really generous community as well. So. Uh, Come on over. It's completely free, like I said. Monday through Friday. We're at it all day. So if you have any questions, it's a great time to ask. I'm there. I'm available. I answer them when I can. And if you're learning, it's, it's just a free resource. And so come on over and take advantage of it. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. So let's go for five. I'm actually going to take some right now. DDOG deal with Microsoft. Thirty six. Go on, baby. Go on, baby. Whoa, Tesla just dumped on me?
Oh, come on. <sighs> well, that's a good... What in the world just happened there? Ah, oh, I just took my eye off it. It was a false break to the top side, and then... <laughs> GM says the deal with Nikolai is not confirmed yet. Man, that was sucky. Got juked out of my pants there on that Tesla. That was a good play, though. That really should have gone. Consolidating like it did, but it just did a false break. And I was too busy looking at, obviously, other plays there. All right. First hour in the bag, just under 46K. Not bad. 